what I am doing is frankly a kind of a zany experiment with the analog discovery. In this case it's the analog discovery too, but I suspect the same thing would work with the original. And I know, let me turn the volume down here a little bit, that I said I was going to be moving on to some other things, uh, partly because uh, Blue Glow Electronics has picked up this idea of using the analog discovery to test audio. And in a sense, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So I'm kind of violating my own rule. I really need to move on to some things, some RF uh, and electronic communications stuff that I need to get done uh, by summer. But I just couldn't help but I, I was intrigued by a thought. I was playing around with the Syncor SG-80, the uh, stereo generator. And it occurred to me that I wonder what would happen if I put the analog discoveries signal through the external input of the Syncor and then sent that through an FM tuner and amplifier and looked at the output. And so what you see on the screen is the network analyzer of the analog discovery. And I'll show you a kind of a block diagram of how this is all hooked up in a minute. But essentially at the top, the yellow line, is the output of the waveform generator. It starts at 200 Hertz and goes up to uh, 30 kilohertz. And then the blue trace is the output of the amplifier. Now let me reduce the volume of the amplifier. This is right now set at 40. I'm going to reduce it to 20. And there you see, this is essentially the frequency response of the entire FM system. In other words, we're starting out with a, a baseband audio signal we're then using that to modulate an FM stereo transmitter. We're then picking up the, that FM stereo on a tuner. In this case, it's the Sony Home Theater. Uh, I own a couple of these, so they're convenient. I always have one that's sitting out kind of spare. And what's in the blue trace is the actual amplifier output. In other words, this is across the 8 ohm dummy loads of the PA81. So as I say, I'm going to show you the results of this in our, the block diagram here in a minute, but I was intrigued by the fact that there seems to be a, a what I would call a suck out or a, uh, a loss of uh, signal in this region, and it's fairly constant. It stays there all the time. And the uh, fall off at around 20 kilohertz is what you expect actually around 15 kilohertz because if you watched my earlier video on the SG80 you know that the uh, FM stereo standard the L plus R signal is deliberately cut off at about 15 kilohertz so it won't interfere with the 19 kilohertz pilot signal which is in about this area remember this is 30 kilohertz out there so 20 kilohertz, I think, would be about here or around here. So the 19 kilohertz signal, the pilot tone would be here, and you definitely want to cut off the audio before you get up into that area so it won't interfere with the pilot tone. At any rate, the, the second rather interesting thing that I noticed is the peculiar phase characteristic. Now I haven't thought about this very much. I suspect there's a good explanation for that and if someone out there has one, we'll post it in the comments. But unlike uh, a traditional amplifier, which has fairly predictable phase response that sort of follows the frequency response, in this case it's, it's pretty much all over the, the map. But you notice that whether it's at relatively low volume or at high volume, and the reason that I chose this particular volume setting, which is 40%, uh, 
is that it makes the output of the amplifier across an 8 ohm load exactly the same value as the in dB as the input signal. There's no particular magic to that. But once again you notice you still have this persistent loss of response in this area. Now it sometimes uh, moves around. I have tried a number of things including reducing the uh, RF signal level there there is virtually no RF that is uh, I think it's about 50 microvolts of RF signal now I'm going to turn it up to about uh, 500 microvolts and then still further to a signal stronger than you would ever get over the air and you still see that uh, that anomaly in the frequency response. So I thought this might be interesting and worth uh, uh, at least showing what I'm doing. It's more just a gee whiz I thought of this why not try it kind of experiment and I'm not claiming that it necessarily has any validity in testing uh, stereo receivers. But it is kind of interesting. And so now let me show you the diagram of exactly what's hooked up here. Here is the setup. On the left over here is the analog discovery. On the right is the Sony receiver. In the middle is the Sencor SG80. The waveform output from the analog discovery's waveform generator is going into the external modulation input of the SG80 where it generates a stereo multiplex signal. That waveform also is going into channel 1 of the analog discovery scope and if you're familiar with the network analyzer you know that this is the standard setup. In other words what the network analyzer does is it analyzes the difference between channel 1 and channel 2 both in terms of uh, gain and phase. So that swept signal is applied to the external modulation inputs. The SG80 is set up to generate a stereo signal at 90.1 megahertz. It's then sent, in this case I'm actually using a coax cable between these, but it could be sent over the air. Maybe the FCC might object to that if this gets to be very, very strong. At any rate, it's then picked up by the receiver in the Sony home theater. That is then amplified by the amplifier, and then the output of this is fed back to the scope. Now, I haven't shown over here the 8-ohm dummy load that is a part of the uh, PA81 and, and so on. But the waveform software, the network analyzer portion, compares these two and that's the display you were seeing. You may recall that there was a little bit of an anomaly in the frequency response. So I thought, well, I wonder if that is uh, something that's present only in, I was using the right channel of the receiver, that is the right channel output here. I'm actually driving, because it's a stereo signal, I'm actually driving both channels of the amplifier, the left and right, simultaneously. So I thought, well, maybe I'll switch over and look at the left channel. So let's take a look at that. So here is the left channel, and nothing else has changed. Same input. I have moved the upper frequency limit to 20 kilohertz instead of 30, uh, partly to emphasize the fact that you want the audio to fall off before the, the 19 kilohertz pilot tone, which is right, right here. But notice that the same anomaly occurs. Now, this could be that there's something that I have some tone control set funny. This particular receiver is a spare that I kind of keep in the background. And so it's pretty much set up the way it came from the factory. And it may be that it has a, a deliberate, that is, it's a set that is causing this to happen. 
But one thing that I do find encouraging is that the left and right channel appear to work the same. So if whether this is a design deficiency or just a setting that I have uh, that I haven't discovered yet in this receiver, nonetheless, I found this to be rather interesting. Turn the volume back down there. And as I said, I haven't quite figured out what's going on with the phase here. It's not that I expect it to be well behaved. It's just that it seems to be going all over the place. So I'm going to have to think about this a little more. But having <laughs> discovered the use of the analog discovery with the SG-80, I thought it might be interesting to at least put this video up and see if people have some comments and thoughts about uh, maybe how this could be used. Uh, in a real testing environment, and whether there's any explanation for this uh, peculiar phase. But at any rate, just, uh, just playing around today and thought this was an interesting result. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, and uh, as I've now said twice, <laughs> I don't really plan to pursue the audio part of the analog discovery, at least not for some time. And that's due to two factors, which I told you about in an earlier video. One is Blue Glow Electronics, who has a, a much better ability to uh, carry this out. He, he services amps. He's got a lot of recent experience. Most of my experience goes back into the 70s uh, and before with tube amps and things. So uh, and I don't repair amps or even work on uh, current amps except my own occasionally when something goes wrong. So he certainly is better positioned and I was really happy to see that he has picked this up as a project. And the second reason is I really do need to move on to some other stuff that I need to finish before the summer. Uh, this is a busy time for volunteers like me who work on things for universities because you pretty much have to finish everything before the end of the spring semester or else it doesn't get looked at until the following year, which means 2018. At any rate, as I say, I hope you enjoyed this and maybe somebody can fill us in on why that crazy phase relationship. And I'm going to look a little more at the uh, at the settings on this Sony receiver and see if there's something I'm doing there that's causing that. At any rate, in the meantime, have a nice day.